All right. So uh, you've lost, would you say, 16 pounds? Yeah. 16 pounds. And then, Alan, I think when I saw you last October, you were probably around the same weight as me, like 240, maybe? Well, yeah, I was almost at uh, almost 250. Okay, so you're around 245. And then what are you at right now? Uh, probably 215. So, boys, it mm-hmm. seems like we've lost some weight. Yeah. We're feeling a little bit better, a little mm-hmm. faster, a little bit more nimble. Alan's got a kid now. He wants to run around because he needs to have excessive speed before the kid burns the house down. And you have dad athleticism. Dad so. athleticism. Oh, yeah. When's that program coming out, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> How to train for life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, monkey bar swings and yeah, you know, one-legged hops around the house. Yes. Um, so let's let's dive into the nutrition aspect of things. Sure. We can go with Alan first. Uh, I know you've made a video on <laughs> how you've lost all the weight in a very simplistic way. Mm-hmm. Um, but why don't we dive into that for maybe the average person who could be a dad um, on a kind of a crazy schedule. And what did you do to lose the weight of that amount? I It, it was actually fairly easy for me and simple because, um, you know, in January or, uh, a, a year ago, I was eating a lot of food, ton of food. Cause I was trying to hold on to a lot of weight. And so once I just stopped eating so much, stopped stuffing my face, the weight just fell off. Um, now I will say that it's more difficult for someone who's eating, you know, 2,500 calories, still kind of hungry every day, but they need to eat. 2,200 calories is a little harder, you know, but I was like stuffing my face uncomfortably because I wanted to maintain a heavy body weight. So when I finally, uh, it was when I had my son, my training was kind of, uh, all over the place, uh, suboptimal I had to get in and get out of the gym really quick. My lifts were going down and I wasn't uh, freaking out about it. I just kind of expected it. And I remember, uh, I was uh, changing his diaper and then I handed him off to my wife and she walked away and there's a big mirror, probably like this in his room. And I was, uh, had my shirt off and I was standing there and looked at myself and I said, you look like shit. And so, uh, at that point I realized, I think I'm going to stop eating so much and lose a little bit of weight because my lifts were going down. So I'm, I'm like, why do I need to stuff my face if my lifts are going to go down anyways? Mm -hmm. And to try to, try to hold on to this body weight for what, you know, like maintenance of my lifts or like 10 pounds more on the bar was just silly. Um, and so I just kind of let the weight fall off and it fell off fairly quickly. And I just did that by not eating so much in that video. I talked about, uh, I think, I think I mentioned three things I did. One, I stopped eating so much ice cream. I stopped eating ice cream altogether because I was eating a lot of it. Uh, two, I would just have one plate breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I wouldn't go get seconds. And three, I stopped snacking so much. So I just ate breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So those were basically the three things that I did. I didn't mess with (laughs) macronutrients at all. I really didn't eat any differently other than the exclusion of snacks and ice cream. And I just ate a little bit less. And I did that. And then, uh, yeah, it's uh, now October. And I've uh, lost 30 pounds. Well, I probably started that in January. In January? Yeah. Um. And we, we can kind of go back with Mar after this little quick thought. Do you think <coughs> excuse me, that a lot of people uh, maybe think that, oh, if I put on all this weight, I'm going to have a very substantial strength gain or get caught up in that mindset of, oh, if I just keep putting on the weight, my, my numbers will increase. Um, and is, do you find that, that it's often true or do you find that maybe it's not what it's all cracked up to be uh, in your opinion? I do think that increasing your body weight will (coughs) increase your lifts, whether it's worth it. That's, that's your judgment call. But I do think that an increase in body weight does help your lifts. And, uh, uh, but I wasn't really interested in putting a couple pounds on the bar, especially because I couldn't train that hard. Um, so I knew that my, my training was not optimal. So I didn't need to match my food to like completely optimize my body weight either. I wanted to lose some weight because my strength is going down anyway. So I was like, this is, I guess, a good time. I'll ride this roller coaster down. Um, and uh, I would uh, frequently convince myself that, one, even when I was 250, you're not that strong. you know. And then uh, I would say, 
there are plenty of guys at, you know, this kind of goal weight of, oh, I'll get down to 225 or 220 to fill the 220 weight class. Uh, there are plenty of guys at 220 who lift hundreds of pounds more than me, even less than 220. And so I would convince myself that, hey, if they can do it, I should be able to get pretty close. You know, there's definitely, I was expecting this adjustment period and I'm still kind of in it uh, to get used to this new body weight. But uh, I still remained optimistic. I didn't say like, well, the, the best uh, the best is behind me. I was like, yeah, there'll be a small adjustment period. I'll ride it out. And uh, I think I can drive my lifts past what they were at 30 pounds less body weight because 220 is not a feather, you know, so. And then where, where are your numbers at comparatively uh, then and now? From yeah, last year. I don't know. I haven't done, I haven't done singles, a single on my lifts, uh, or really tried to PR, uh, since January. Okay. Um, I know that I'm training for a strongman competition right now and, uh, I feel, um, really prepared and everything's moving in the right direction as far as those five lifts. And that's what I'm more concerned with. I have not been worrying about where my bench is at. Um, I've just been trying to drive up my push press, my Viking press, stone loads, um, car deadlift stuff like that so have you felt different physically like losing the weight like have you noticed like damn like i, I do feel lighter oh, or yeah. like i move better yeah uh, yeah know? i'm not i'm not uh constantly feeling like i have to burp or take a shit which is nice that's <laughs> solid yeah and then my clothes <laughs> probably like underrated but like that's yeah. probably yeah. You could it's, uh, i've noticed that flying is a little more comfortable like just losing i lost like five inches off my waist Wow. And uh, so just sitting like in a normal chair is more comfortable. Uh, my clothes fit more comfortably. And so that's all nice. Have you gotten uh, like any like health markers? Like, like your I haven't done any okay. blood work or It'd anything. It'd just be interesting. No. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm cool. sure. It, I'm sure it improved. Yeah. yeah and uh, uh, pull-ups are a lot easier now. So uh, that's nice. I miss doing ton, like a ton of pull-ups. Yeah. <laughs> Did someone say pull-ups? <laughs> nope. Nope. Well, that's Here, like we nope. Here we go. Perfect. Here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So let, let's hear, let's hear your nutritional advice. Uh, I know you have Eric Helm, so I guess is overseeing you, right? Yeah, loosely. loosely. I so I'm doing this uh, myself um, with his overarching guidance. If I want to get really lean, to the point, kind of like what uh, Alan said, where sometimes it's nice just to give your programming over to someone else, right? I'm not at that level of complexity where I think it's outside of my, not only outside of my control, but I don't want to deal with that mental hassle. Losing this weight has been quite easy. But if I wanted to get to the next level of leanness, and I think there are certain tiers and certain physiological markers, and it just gets progressively harder, I would absolutely use Eric just because it'd make that process easier. Mm -hmm. So you guys have both been like, it's pretty easy. <laughs> so for the person who's saying, fuck you right now. Sure. This is very hard for me. Yeah. I'm struggling. Uh, I've tried yeah. and I keep trying and it's not happening. What would be some tips of advice you would give to them to help them uh, get to their goal? Yeah. Uh, I would say first, it depends upon where you're starting. Uh, I brought up the physiological markers for a reason. If you want to get really shredded, it's very hard. I think the complexity increases the leaner you get. If you're over 20% body fat and you're trying to lose weight, I think even satiety single, uh, signals are different, right? Um, you will get hungrier when you're below 10% in an absolute way. There's no doubt about that. If you're over 20% body fat and you have a good amount of adipose tissue and you're just trying to feel healthier, it's more psychological than physiological. And so that's a different conversation entirely. But I would say for people that have struggled consistently when it comes to the body composition, when you become food focused or when that becomes your identity, it becomes harder because you're placing all this extra pressure on uh, yourself. And there's two individuals. There's Danny Lennon um, and Cliff Harvey, uh, who we had on an episode about carbohydrates, talking about the two different types of individuals when it comes to dietary compliance. And essentially there's the all or nothing gang. And that's kind of the people I feel that fail. And then there's kind of the moderate. So when it comes to food now these days, I've turned more into a moderate. I never had a bad relationship with food. I was just more like, nope, I got to do this. Okay, whatever. For those that struggle that probably are more absolute, more all or nothing, I think changing the goal, kind of shifting the goalposts, as they say in, in uh, argument tactics, makes more sense. 
because when you become food focused or when you think about food, you're going to become more food focused. When you think about your composition, it's subjective, right? You're looking at yourself. It's hard to be objective. In fact, it's impossible. It's not like lifting weight, right? Where it's like, I hit this number, I hit this number. It's like, well, how do I look? It's like, well, how do I think I look? Um, and so for those individuals, what I have found the biggest success with clients is turning into being more performance focused. Uh, and I think individuals that struggle with weight, you should not even make them attempt to focus on the weight. You should make them focus instead on habits outside of the gym, uh, in the gym in order to increase their performance. And then their composition will be a byproduct of their work in the gym. And then it'll reframe things for them for easier compliance. I think. I think that the most difficult part of losing weight <laughs> is kind of what Omar was talking about, but it's behavior change. Mm -hmm. And, um, you really do have to reframe your, your thinking. I've talked about this in a video also that, uh, for me, I would always associate being hungry with, uh, you know, a negative effect on my lifts. Like I'm hungry. I'm losing body weight. I'm getting weak. Oh, I'm hungry. I went to bed hungry. Tomorrow's, uh, tomorrow morning squat session is going to suck. Um, and so being hungry was always a bad thing, but I've just accepted that it's okay to be hungry. You know, I'll eat later tonight. Um, I don't always have to be full. And I would associate being full with strength. Oh, I'm going to stuff my face and get so full and I'm just going to crush squats tomorrow. And so those were a lot of, um, I, I think, s harmful narratives that I was telling myself. And so reframing my, my um, you know, the story I was telling myself was really helpful. And I think as far as behavior change goes, um, if you, I would say some helpful tips would be uh Go to the grocery store once or twice a week. Get what you need to get. Follow the list and keep that in your house and don't eat out. As hard as that is, it is. It's not. Uh, it's not simple to lose weight or to change your behaviors. But I think that that that's helpful for me. If I don't have ice cream in the freezer, I'm not going to eat ice cream. And uh, if I don't have a bunch of snacks at home, I'm not going to eat snacks. If all I have is chicken, rice, and broccoli, I'm going to make that. And um, I think that if you uh, if you tend to be the type of person to go home, you just and to go home and I'll stop and get something to eat on the way. That's that right there is a decision you have to make to say, I'm not going to go get fast food. I'm going to go home, right, and cook food. And that would be kind of a, and that's behavior change. And uh, I actually knew a guy who was trying to lose weight. And um, he said that every time he drove home at night, he would drive by the donut stop and he was stopping at a donut every single night. And so he was like, I started driving a different way home just so I didn't have to drive past yeah. this donut shop. I swear every time I drove past it, I couldn't help it. I was stopping at a donut. So you just drive home a different way. So changing things like that is difficult, but it's necessary. Yeah, I, I wish I could remember the book that I read it in, but it talked about behavior uh, with eating and um, even like on work breaks where people would go and, and they would pig out um, on the work break, but they figured out that it was – not actually about the eating essentially, but the social aspect of being on a work break. And they tied that to like, Oh, my friends. Um, so basically it was instead of going into the workroom to meet with the friends, it was just meet them outside right. like where there wasn't food. Um, so it was kind of like weird behavior changes such as that, uh, where they realized that instead of taking in a donut every day, which adds up to X amount of calories, you know, whenever, um, they just gradually would lose weight or trying to change their social, uh, you know, environment. So that, like you were saying, it wasn't like the drive, like the guy, he just never passed that place that we never stopped. They never went into the break room yeah. and had two donuts just to talk with their friends. So it's like kind of diving like one step deeper. It's like, why are you doing what you're doing? And like, yeah, like there's some actual, like you can come to some realizations of like, damn, like maybe it's not about the food, but it's like, why, like where I'm at or something like, you know, like just weird stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, uh, one other helpful thing that I've <laughs> noticed recently with myself is staying busy throughout the day. So you're minimizing that downtime or that boredom mm -hmm. when you just want to eat or just go to the cupboard and graze, uh, or I'm going to sit on the couch and watch some TV and eat. Um, I, uh, oftentimes I'm so busy now that I've dropped to two fifteen, I've realized I don't really want to go any lower in this and I have crept down lower. And so I kind of have to realize, hey, maybe you should eat a little bit more. Um, and I'll notice that sometimes I'll be at the gym so busy, especially since the move these past month, past six weeks, 
uh, I'll be so busy. I'll, I'll eat it, you know, four 30 or five in the morning breakfast. I'll go to the gym and then it's throughout the whole day. And I'm like, I should probably actually stop and go eat something or else I'm not going to eat until dinner tonight. Um, because I'm just so busy. And so really if I was, if someone was to say, um, yeah, you got to fast for a week. Uh, I feel like I could do it because just cause I'm so busy and so preoccupied that I'm really not thinking about food much. Um, so it's helpful to stay busy. this far in the video I know you're motivated I know you really want to make this happen and I just want to let you know it's okay if you mess up it's okay if you make mistakes you just have to stick with this if you mess up start over the next day if it's so hard that you have to do this in gradients do that start with the seven day period where you eat clean and then 14 and then 21 and then basically you keep going from there until today's segment getting ripped getting shredded you know getting those gains and the best diet that I feel like is good for just entrepreneurs, people that are working professionals, or maybe you've just always struggled with losing weight or getting lean, this is the best diet for you. And it's the easiest to follow because you don't have to think about food all day. Actually, to make this point, most people that go on a diet fail. And the key, the trick is to actually have a change in your lifestyle. And that's ultimately going to be the best way for you to hit your goals with fitness, with nutrition, with health, and just feel confident. So on that note, I'm going to go ahead and share with you what I've done in terms of hacks, to make this change successful, how I set up my environment, and what a day looks like when you're intermittent fasting. But before I do that, I'm gonna share with you the benefits of intermittent fasting. What is intermittent fasting? To keep it simple, it's where you don't eat for a period of time. Most commonly, it's 16 hours, that's the fast, and then you have an eight hour period where you eat food in that block of time. Now, for a lot of people, this might sound hard at first, but you'll get used to it. You're Think about this, back in the day, when we were hunters and gatherers, what do people do? They would go out there, they would hunt, get the kill, and then basically bring it back and they would eat you know, a big meal. In other places besides the US, you know, portions aren't as big. You know, lunch is the most common meal. So it's really about where you're raised. Trust me, when you switch to this, your body will adapt and it'll be a lot easier for you to maintain a lean look and also, I just like to wake up and jump into work. But let's go ahead and break down some of the benefits that I found online and I'll share some of the benefits that I've experienced personally. So benefit number one is weight loss. So it's pretty simple. If you are going on a diet, you need to make sure your calories are less than what you're actually needing for that day. So you need to be in a deficit. Now, the reason why this makes it simple is because you don't have to think about food all day long. Number two, and I'm gonna go ahead and read these off. Number two, we have insulin resistance. Number three, we have inflammation. Number four, we have heart health. Number five, cancer. I don't take my word on that one. There's studies on these different health benefits. If you wanna look into that on your own, do that, get with your doctor, that's gonna be the best route for you to go. And number six, we have brain health. And number seven, this is probably the best one. Okay, the funniest one actually. Anti-aging, right? So it was found that rats that practiced intermittent fasting actually lived 30 to 80% longer. So if you have a pet rat, that might be a good thing to keep in mind. Anyways, those are the benefits. There's scientific research that has been done on these areas on different test groups and it's all really, really good. At the end of the day, whatever you're trying to do for your diet and feeling good, you wanna just make sure it works for you, it works for your schedule, and you're able to be uh, consistent with it. And this is a pretty easy one to be consistent with. You just do intermittent fasting and get results. You have to make sure that you are eating the right amount of calories. So what you're gonna need to do is make sure that you track those. So you can get an app like MyFitnessPal. This really helped me out at first. And then once you know what to eat, you just, kind of eat that same thing. Maybe you get something new, you can look it up 
on the app, see how many calories it is, but basically you'll be able to type in your height, your weight, what your goal is, and it will show you exactly what you need to be eating in terms of calories on a daily basis to lose weight, to maintain weight, etc. That Those are some of the benefits. Now for me personally, what I feel like it does is it allows me just to wake up every single day. I wake up, I get a coffee, it depends. I don't always have coffee every single morning. There'll be times where I don't have coffee because I have trouble sleeping at night and I noticed that when I completely eliminated caffeine, it helped with that, but on a side note, most people do coffee or tea in the morning. Now, you wanna try not to use sugar or anything like that. You wanna drink this thing just straight black coffee. You can put a little bit of like almond milk in it, but overall, you wanna eliminate the sugar. Now, here's the thing is, you don't have to approach this up front. You could do it in a gradient approach, meaning you could start with just doing coffee in the morning, put a little bit of sugar and cream, make your normal coffee, but you're basically gonna skip breakfast in the morning and you're gonna eat at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. Whatever time you feel like is best for you, starting off, you're gonna be extremely hungry if you've already been eating breakfast. So you might start off at 11 and then a week goes by, two weeks go by, you go to 12 and then maybe it's 12.31. But basically, once you eat that first meal, you're gonna eat all of your food in an eight hour window. And that's basically it. You're gonna get all your calories in, it's done. You know, For me, I pretty much eat one large meal every single day and this isn't the best meal to eat, okay? It's not the healthiest, it's not the most nutritious, but I eat Chipotle, I'll eat Chick-fil-A, I'll eat something with like a lot of protein and I basically supplement that with protein shakes with fruit, with vegetables. Um, I do take a supplement to get like my greens in every single day. So I basically have everything on super autopilot. So I literally do not spend any time cooking for the most part. There are some special occasions, but that's what I have set up. I do my main meal, I'll have a smaller meal, and then I'll basically have a supplement which would be like protein or whatnot. Now the whole goal of this is for you to not think about food every single two to three hours. You could just focus on what you have to eat during those eight hours and be done with it. And actually, here's the real trick. Literally keep nothing in your fridge so that you are not tempted to eat anything that's not in alignment in your diet. Right here we have some meat, some bread, some almond milk, and usually I do have a few things, but to be honest, I just need to go grocery shopping. In terms of benefits, it's also something that I've noticed that when I eat specific types of food, I feel groggy and I feel like weighed down. So I try to eat uh, something like Chipotle, which, you know, it's not the healthiest, I know, I know, but I'll do like the Chipotle salad, the rice and rice and beans, and then chicken. That all, I still feel good after that. So another thing that I would do is start to become aware of the foods that make you feel good, or more energetic, that will lead to motivation, that will lead to action, you'll feel good about what you're doing. As time goes on, what's gonna happen is you can start taking out those things that are bad for you one by one and still have them every once in a while. So like, I'll have Sour Patch Kids when I watch movies uh, you know, every so often. So if I watch a movie on the weekend, I'm gonna have Sour Patch Kids and a Diet Coke. Now I don't do that every single weekend, but every so often I will do that. Or if I go to the theaters, which they were closed down for a while, I think they're open back up. I would basically go ahead and have that same combination. So whatever it is, those items that you really, really like and they're not necessarily good for you, you could start taking those out one by one in a gradient approach. Focus on trying to make those adjustments and find foods that are healthier for you. At the same time, you don't necessarily need chicken, the asparagus, the rice, like super, super clean food. Obviously, that's gonna be good for you. There's a lot of nutrients. It's gonna be probably the best thing for your health long-term, but to just feel better and look better pay attention to things that you're actually eating on a daily basis. And I know for myself, when I stop being healthy, it really affects my motivation at my core. I almost feel guilty if I'm not being healthy. I do, I do. If I skip workouts too often, I just don't feel as confident. So all of these things can help you as an individual, help you get better. I hope you got some value from this. I just try to make this as simple as possible. 
and if you wanted to go ahead and figure out what food is good for you, what food would fit inside of your meal plan, you can get that at MyFitnessPal. With that, I'll see you in the next video. Get this far in the video, I know you're motivated, I know you really wanna make this happen, and I just wanna let you know it's okay if you mess up, it's okay if you make mistakes, you just have to stick with this. If you mess up, start over the next day. If it's so hard that you have to do this ingredients, do that. Start with the seven day period where you eat clean, and then 14, and then 21, and then basically you keep going from there until you get to 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, etc. And you will make the change. This will become a habit for you, it will become a lifestyle. And I'm gonna also let you know this, we all have our own insecurities. We all have our own insecurities. I have mine, just to let you know, I have extremely skinny legs, like I work them out. They're pretty strong actually, but those that's one of mine. So just remember, it's you versus you every single week. Try to get better, focus on getting better, and at the end of the day, <clears throat> If you look yourself in the mirror and you see progress, that leads to happiness. There is a direct correlation between progress and happiness. So go out there, get it, make it happen, and write down your goal. Write down your goal, keep it in front of you every single day, and just go after it relentlessly. I'll see you in the next video. My goal for this channel is to help you get better, improve in the different areas of life that I have an interest in, which is business, entrepreneurship, health, mental health, and really trying to make sure that you get as far as you can by providing you informational videos every single week. So make sure you like and subscribe if you want more content on a weekly basis. I'll see you soon.